It's Tony I again with another edition of In The Minute, but to help Tony out, I had to bring on a, a guest, somebody help that- Help me. <laughs> you, 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 you see me in a bear fight, you better help the bear. Don't be helping me. Tony. I got mine together. Hey, Chris, what's up, man? I'm doing well, how you doing? I mean, we, who been talking to Donna? You talking about she bringing you on to help me. I'm bringing you on because she need two people to help her. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, you know what? We had to bring on an expert, uh, somebody. We've been trying to get Chris Samuels on for a long time because, you know, uh, off, a former offensive lineman for the Washington Redskins at that time, now the Washington Commanders is the name. And it's a whole bunch, Tony, that's been going on. The Washington Commanders are looking for a new head coach. And guess what? Ben Johnson, offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions, was one of those big names. And as of Tuesday, he decided as the commanders were going to interview him and Weaver, the defensive coordinator, that he decided to say he's staying in Detroit. And then their other coach in Houston, Bobby Slowick, is another one that's staying with his team. So Tony and Chris, let's jump right into this. The commanders, two of their top individuals wanting to be the head coach for the commanders decided that they're staying with their teams. Uh, let's start with Ben Johnson. I think he was at the top of the list. And one thing about uh, uh, Ben Johnson, I think that he decided that he wanted to stay uh, because he had unfinished business with the Detroit Lions. And also when you look at the Detroit Lions, Tony and Chris, they basically have that team put together from the defensive side of the ball to the, offensive side of the ball. They got two solid running backs in Montgomery and Gibbs, and then the, the wide receivers, a good offensive line. And uh, the same thing, he turned down the job to Seattle. Uh, but but when you look at the commanders and you look at uh, Seattle, neither one of those teams have a complete roster put together, a solid rock roster. Neither one of them really have quarterbacks. Offensive line is shambles and everything. So Tony, starting with you, Two coaches that the commanders had hired their list, list decides to stay. Well, you know, it's going to be like that, Donna. You know, we've been doing this for so many years. And as these coaches look around, especially the, the atmosphere that's been going on right now, they're not they're not coming to a team that really don't even know who their head coach is right now when they have all the opportunities. Right now, there's quite a few opportunities out there. So what do you do? You take advantage of it. The one that's best for you. Maybe if they had a coaching line, now you look at right here, do not, they not only do not have a coaching line, when they don't know who their draft pick is going to be, they don't know who their quarterback is going to be. This is in disarray. What they're calling this is the RB, which everybody hates to say, rebuilding. So, you know, a lot of people not going to come here. You got to keep it real because they're figuring I got a 50 50 chance if I go there. They may hire the wrong people, they may hire the right one. But they look at they go somewhere already established what needs one player or one coach or one situation that it can get us there, naturally they're going to take advantage of that. But right now they have to do it while the, while the fire is hot, man, because this is a bucket of blood, TKL hot, scalding water, and you know you got to get something done then because those jobs are going fast. So worse, they're going to have to pick up the pace. Well, 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 this, did you hear uh, Tony talk about that, Chris? But one thing he said was they've got to pick up the pace because a lot of the key coaches out there are gone. And basically the position coaches are gone. But the other one how on the list is up there with the Ravens as far as McDonald. But could you talk a little bit about at this stage, they do have a great general manager, manager with Adam Peters, uh, who's starting the process of looking for this. But how do you see this all playing out, being that these two guys decide to stay with their former teams? Well, well I think for me, I'm not shocked. You know, uh, like Tony said, I agree with him. Um, you know, going somewhere, starting all over, where you're unsure about the offensive line, you're unsure about the quarterback. I mean, that's really, really hard. In this business, you got to win and produce right away. You go somewhere and start over right away, and, you know, two or three years, you don't get that thing turned around, you might be losing your job, period. So why not go ahead and stay where you are when you know everything's pretty much intact? Uh, like Tony said, you know, a few pieces here and there, and you possibly have a chance to make it back to the NFC Championship uh, and, and Detroit and possibly make it to a Super Bowl. So it's kind of a no-brainer situation. Hey, man, you know, Rachel, 
Hey, Tony, they losing some key things, but what? So now, Tony, you got Quinn up in Dallas. That's one guy that you talked about before, and I don't want him. I don't. I don't. I hope that. Whoa, they whoa, 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 back up. Tony. <laughs> That's why they call me. We, we call this. I don't show want Dan Quinn. Minute. You need to change your mind because you don't know a lot about him. The only reason I know a little bit more about him is my 28 years of being a uniform inspector, I got a chance to see all the teams. And he was here in Atlanta when I was here. He's a very good coach. He may have made some wrong decisions on personnel when he was here. He tried to go with a smaller, like on defense, smaller linebacking group. Bigger up front, then when he lost his up front, people had hurt his smaller group. So he may be that. But if you look at what he's done with Dallas, he's made them one of the most feared teams, uh, one of the most fastest teams in the league. He did well. But what happened was people figured him out. We've been saying each and every show this year, if you run right at Dallas, you can run over him. That's all it is. Quinn is good. I'm going to tell you what, he would be a breath of fresh air to bring him here. Well, let me just say this. A better breath of fresh air right here is up in Baltimore with Mike McDonald's because this guy, since they brought him in, he's been with the Ravens for a minute now. He's turned that defense around also, Tony. And now they're looking for fresh, innovative guys. You look at a lot of the guys that this commander's team has let go as far as Sean McVay, uh, Kevin O'Connell, uh, uh, you got up in Green Bay of a floor. You got down in Miami, McDaniels. And, and I mean, the lists go on of coaches. They let it go. And then you got Cal Shanahan, who's in the Super Bowl with the San Francisco 49ers. So when you look at this is the list still out there for the commanders. And, you know, Seattle and commanders are the two teams that are looking for head coaches now. So you've got like Dan Quinn, like you said, former NFL coach. Uh, uh, Anthony Weaver, defensive coordinator for the Ravens. They were supposed to be interviewing him. And then, you know, the uh, Aaron Glenn, the Lions defensive coordinator. So those are the three names. And let me just say this. Eric B. Enemy is still in the conversation, too. I don't think that he's high up there with the other guys. But someone alluded to maybe if they get a uh, Mike McD McDonald, that maybe they keep an Eric B. Enemy. But I don't like them keeping coaches if if it's not a fit, because the head coach should be able to pick whoever his other coaches are. And the key thing, just as important as the head coach, it will be those position coaches too, Chris. You well know that being an offensive lineman, uh, whoever they may get. I mean, who's out there for you? Tony wants uh, a Dan Quinn. He thinks that he's there. You must have oh, known that was my next question. You're talking about coaches. I'm talking about personnel here, young lady. I'm talking about you Mike McDonald. You, I'm <laughs> glad you saw Hey, Chris, we've been having a little argument on our show. See, you can't tell that, Chris, it, can you? She didn't want to bring you back because I know you are going to agree with me. But right hey, now, Chris, you know you, you agree with me. You were one of the top <laughs> offensive linemen ever in the game and one of the top the Washington Redskins have had. Now, do you, and you were a number one draft choice, so you know that feeling. Do you feel at the number two spot there's any offensive lineman out there, such as yourself, that is worth that position, that can come in and play right away and give this team a whole lot of years? Do you see there's anyone out there like that? If you, Even with you being offensive lineman, put your general manager thing on now. If you were the coach, do you see that lineman out there or do you see that quarterback that's going to lead your franchise? Hey, Chris, can I just throw my little two cents? Oh, that, 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 you won't let the man I, talk. I just to let you, let, can I just throw my two cents in so that you can answer the question, uh, you know, uh, so for both of us? Because this is the draft that's high in quarterbacks and offensive linemen. And let me just say this. It's the uh, offensive lineman is a strong one. It's a guy up in Penn State. Uh, it's Chris also. Being a, but I'm not saying just, just because you were an offensive lineman, but, you know, Tony trying to go to quarterback-wise, I'm trying to say that draft down, you still could get a quarterback and you could get some of those top offensive linemen. But I just want to throw my two cents in so that Tony don't put the pressure on you to go with him. Oh, uh, yeah, you just don't want the man to answer me right. Go ahead and knock it out, Chris. You know, you know what we're talking about here. We're building a team. We ain't, I'm building you know, a Hey, Chris, do you want to make a change or do you want to make a point? Chris, how long has the offensive line been bad? Since you left. Yeah, it, it's been bad for a while. I'm an offensive lineman guy. I love offensive linemen. 
Donna, I'm sorry. I have to kind of lean towards the quarterback. I'm getting ready to take you off the screen, Chris. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't take that. And I'm going to tell you why. You, you, you got to look at it from this standpoint. An offensive lineman, true enough, you have to have the quarterback protected. You have to have a running game. But in this league, uh, this day and age, you have to have a quarterback. If you have a really, really good quarterback, you have a chance. You got the best offensive line in the world, but everybody knows how hard it is to run the ball consistently in the NFL. You have to have a guy that can sit back and dissect defenses, go through progressions, and, uh, read the defense and make plays through on the ball. Simple as that. And a guy that can run. And my favorite, uh, favorite guy is Jaden Daniels from LSU. Heisman guy. Me too. Athletic. He can throw oh, yeah. he can read coverages. I think you can build a team around him. It, the, the offensive line draft this year is so heavy to where I feel like you can get some good linemen a little bit later. So, Donna, I'm sorry. Oh, Tony, stop shaking your head and smile. You know what? You know, hey, 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 man, she's a player hater. I keep telling you this for the last few weeks, and she just said, well, now you can come back and she said exactly what I said. And Donna did. Hey, Tony, I didn't say not get a quarterback. I just said that trade down a little bit because you'll still two. be able you to. Keep the that, only keep thing that I agree number with two. you is the guy from LSU. That's the one I want. Right. And if you really think about it, if you get the best offensive left tackle in the draft, number one overall, remember Orlando Pace came in, number one overall, is he a game changer? You know, can he score touchdowns? Can he make plays? No, he's, he's a guy that's going to pancake guys and protect the quarterback. And that's very important. We understand that. But I need a quarterback with some wheels that can run when the pressure you said a pass rush is so good nowadays. And I need a guy that can read coverages and go through progression. A guy that can change the game. Look at Tony hey, smiling. Well, hey, Don, uh, Jay, smiling. Jay, let me ask you this, Chris. Can you write that in crayon so she can understand hey, what hey, you're saying? Hey, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, I know. Can you I write know that. that. Chris, Chris. Start Q B, not L I. You, come on, come on, Don. Hey, now I know, Chris. You got to give it you up. Called Tony before to get on his no, side. No, no, I did. I promise. Okay, Tony, back to you now. Chris <coughs> was the guy from LSU. That is one guy that because I, I told you I wouldn't take the uh, Caleb. I told you that he to me is too too much of a prima donna. Would you when you look at the quarterbacks that's out there that are available in the draft? Who would you take? Because i that's the only thing I agree with Chris is, is the LSU quarterback. You know, I, I, I look at the quarterbacks in a certain situation like no one expected so many of these young quarterbacks to do as well as they did this year. So what you need to look at when you're looking at, what do you have that is really good for your team? <coughs> Excuse me. You're making me choke up on this because I may have to lie and say you had something right. But at the same time, you look at what quarterback fits. This quarterback, as you said, the young man can run, can do everything. This team right here needs a quarterback that can run well but read defenses well because he's going to have to step in and play right away. It's not going to be an opportunity. Then he has to be what, – what I'm saying is he can't be a person that gets hurt all the time. You can have a running quarterback, and I know that's the style right now. But if you got a quarterback that, that is, is vulnerable to the getting hurt, it's still no good. So what you try to do is look at the find a weapon that has done everything, ran well, stayed well, and learned the game well. Then you start deriving the pep quarterback you want to take then. I think it is a big process. And now, Chris, you can tell, tell this. Not only with you have to do that. Not only with quarterbacks, you got to do that to every position now. Hey, Chris. Yeah, well, yeah, with Tony, and and along with what Tony just asked you, with every position, looking at the Commanders' offensive line, would you keep any of those guys be, besides uh, Colt uh, uh, Cosme? Because to me, the rest of the guys haven't played well, or is that because of 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 coaching or or any of those things? Do you? They can't play. Well, that, I agree, Tony. Okay, let's just call it like you see it. They had some, some on there can't play, but some of them can't play dead. And I'm going to tell you what, ain't no sense. Ain't no sense in trying to, let's don't clean it up. We, don't, we clean it up. We clean it up the whole year. I'm through cleaning up because half of them ain't going to be here next year. They need to go try to play somewhere else, beginning with Division Two. Hey, hey, Chris, because Adam Peters, the general, Adam Peters said when asked about how did he see this roster, he said it's a lot of work to be done. 
That means that as Tony talking about cleaning house almost. It's definitely time. It's definitely time to clean house. And um that's why you better get your running quarterback because right now that offensive line is a shambles. And unless they clean house and get better players, it's gonna be trouble. The quarterback better be able to run for his life. Right, because you know they never had a real solid running game because of it, Donna. But let's look at how you can get a great player. From what I understand, number four up in in Baltimore was known to be a high, great, had a great year, but he had two bonehead plays that cost him an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. That's what you have to look at as well when you evaluate these individuals, and not just the physical aspect, the mental aspect. The team aspect. When a player does something like that, what, and I, I'm trying not to say his name because I don't think that's fair. Hey, Flowers. <laughs> wait, wait, Tony, since you to segue into the playoffs, let's jump right in here. All, you know, Baltimore Ravens up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City on the road for the first time in a long time. Baltimore with the first home playoff game since the, the 70s. So, I mean, it was big. Baltimore Ravens was the team walking in that everybody said, this is the team to beat. This is the team that looks like they're going to win the Super Bowl. They've got a top 10, well, top one defense. Uh, they've got a quarterback in Lamar Jackson who's played well. And then they've got a scoodle of, of, of wide receivers in Jay Flowers, uh, uh, O.J. Beck, Beckham. And then they've got Bateman. Then they had Andrews back to tight end. So offensive line had played well. So they had all the moving parts in Kansas City. You know, during the course of the season, their receivers couldn't catch a cold. They were dropping so many balls. Even Travis Kelsey, maybe he had to, his mind on too much on it. I ain't going to mention her name because they mentioned it too much. So I'm his not mind was out in Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. So they were, and even Patrick Mahomes. When you look at his numbers, he was down in yardage. He was down in touchdowns. He was down in uh, – he, he had the most uh, interceptions that he had in his whole career. But then all of a sudden, you all both, you Chris and you know, that they said the team that catch fire at the end, which Kansas City, the receivers in the last two games had not been dropping balls. Their offensive line had played well. And who knew that Kansas City had a solid defense? But then you had a Baltimore, a team that looked like that they went backwards in that playoff game because everything that got them there, the running game, just yes. stopped. They stopped running the ball. Lamar Jackson was inaccurate. Uh, I mean, he hit passes that was all over the place. And then you had, like you said, Tony, you wasn't going to mention his name, but I'm going to call it out, Jay Flowers. It had a, a, a personal foul at a crucial time in the game that would have moved them closer to the end zone in, in tying the game up, taking the lead. Then the, the player that he taunted as far as Steve, he makes the big play in the end zone, knocking the ball from Flyers. So, again, a rookie mistake and all that. But it's not just on him, Tony. That whole Baltimore team, and people don't like to say they were out coached, but Andy Reid was just smart. I mean, he out, out performed in every way. So I gave you my analysis of that game because, as Gary always tells us, you never count out Kansas City and Petch Mahomes, and he is dead on because unlike Lamar Jackson, who when you looked at him, he had distress on his face. Petch Mahomes, every time they put the camera on him, not only in the Baltimore game, but in any game, even if they're behind, he is cute, cool as a cucumber. Tony, how did you see that? game and also Chris after Tony gives his analysis you jump in well you know if you take a look at it and really to, to be truthful about it experience won those games and you know Flowers did a bonehead play but he's a rookie he's had a great year he won all his boys back home and said did you see me jump up but it was a crucial time of the game that play as well as the, the okay you can go with the fumble that was just a, a physical play was made but that play right there, one that did not have to occur, that is what cost them the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. They had broke Kansas City down. They were running on them. They finally got back, which they did not have a running game all game the way they have all year. So that was out, Coach, as you said. But at the same time, when they had opportunity, and Chris, you would tell us this when you it's your turn because we need to let you get some time on this. When a team, when you're out there, and the defense holds a team and gets you back out there, and then you make it happen. You guys go out there wanting to make sure you score. Same thing with the defense. When we see our offense go out there and, and, and do something, we try to get them the ball back. 
This is where this young ball man had them on the four, five, seven yard line. Instead of him just getting up and being a professional and going back, and that's all part of growing. But at the same time, it still doesn't take away the fact everyone is saying, "Well, he was young. He was a no. You need you're a professional." And you need to govern yourself like a professional. And getting up to show off for your boy and throwing the ball down and sticking when you got the, the the ball down where you can tie the game up and you would rather do that. It was not called for and it would not be forgotten and he don't need to forget that his whole career. Yeah, so I, I agree. Uh, the situation with Flowers was definitely a bonehead move and a crucial part of the game. But I'm more frustrated with the coaches. Uh, I didn't feel like they had a great offensive game plan. Uh, Lamar Jackson, he has wheels. You have to run the ball. How many times did they run the read option? You know, that play right there alone spread defenses out all season. They got away from it. They went down by that many points to abandon the run so early in the game. And also, too, with Lamar Jackson, I felt like he was fighting against the critics, saying that he's not a pocket passer. Sometimes you just got to tuck the ball and run. That's what he does best. He did an outstanding job making the adjustments. He worked on his passing game. He threw the ball extremely well. He improved. So when the chips on the line and the game that big, you got to let your guy give the channel take over and let it fly. And I feel like he was trying to prove the critics wrong and he held back what he does best. One, one, yeah, maybe he was trying to make it one on one. Everybody talking about my horn. But, Don, I need to ask you this. If you take a look at that, I mean, why did they not use Beckham until the end? I think he could have been a big part of that. And why do you think they did not run with – because one of their offensive linemen was hurt? That's been the core of their, their game all year, running that ball. I know that the quarterback done a lot of it, but when you're in a crucial game, and that's the one thing I like about the Detroit coach, he may have took him out of the game, but he gave him a chance. And that's what they, you didn't see in Baltimore. Yeah, Tony, I think it's a little bit of what Chris said uh, about what, where he's talking about the coaches because I don't think offensively they had a good game plan. Why would you not allow Lamar Jackson to do what he did all year long and use his legs? And and not only that, they're running back. I mean, uh, uh, Kansas City had their offensive top offensive line out the game hurt. Um, but again, Tony, I think it goes back to you, you. I mean, they schemed them well as far as Kansas City. Uh, Baltimore didn't do a good job, and maybe they were living off their own hype as far as what they did all season long. But what I was disappointed in most was that defense, our number one defense, Tony Ravens, first in points per game allowed, opposing pass uh, passer rating, rushing touchdowns allowed, sacks, and they were tied for first in takeaways at thirty-one. And, and then they ranked third in yards per game were per play allowed. So I didn't see that defensively. Now the second half they buckled up a little bit more, and they were allowed. You know they didn't. Kansas City didn't really score, but I thought Kansas City came became a little conservative in the late in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. And you asked why didn't they use uh, Odell Beckman Jr. a lot more? That's because of Kansas City's uh, secondary locking him down. Because when you look. At everybody besides uh, Flowers, they locked the tight end Andrews down for the most part and locked down Beckman into the second half. They eased up a little bit, but they had locked down corners in Kansas City, and that defense was creating so many problems overall. But I think that uh, Baltimore shot themselves in the foot by not playing the game that got them to that point. And now Kansas City, again, the experienced team that's been there – Three straight times, the fourth now, and headed into possibly uh, uh, a Super Bowl win again, Tony. They're but not I going to no Super Bowl win. You can take that off the list. They had, a rat, they had a rabbit's foot in their pocket last week, and that rabbit got cooked this week. So, no, uh, they ain't going to so, so, see, you and Chris and the 49ers, so let's just switch. That's what you're 100% right. Yeah. And the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions came out, and they, they we knew – that Detroit had two solid run, running backs in Montgomery and Gibbs. I mean, this this is a, a perfect backfield. Then you had uh, Jared Goff, who has played well under Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson has really turned that team around offensively, a great offensive yeah. line. And they were taking it to the 49ers. And then, you know, like you said, Campbell, the head coach, decided on fourth down twice, which they could have kicked field goals. But he was true to what he's done all season long. So you can't be mad at him 
because that's what he's done. But me in a big game like that, I'm putting points on the board. But that's true to him. What happened in the to to the Detroit Lions in the second half where you know the 49ers buckled it up and and they played and Christian McCaffrey the way he runs is just dynamic. Cal Shanahan just you know how they say coaches make adjustment at halftime. He's one of the great ones that actually does a good job of that. So Tony and Chris, y'all think the 49ers are going to get this, but I'm sticking with Kansas City. Well, you know, before you get started, Chris, let me digress because I want you to ask this during the time too. Something happened in that Eagles back room. Let's first talk about the Ravens defense, Eagles defense. There's two kind of goals, the real thing and fool's goal. They had fool's goal during the year. They got away. They number one and number two defense got the behinds handed to them. But something happened. How can you start off being 10-1 and you end up 11-7? and seven? Something happened in Philadelphia. From what I hear, it was a few between the receivers and the, the quarterback of this. Now, when we go to the Detroit side of the game, Donna, let's go back to the beginning of the year. They were just holding on by their fingernails, and the last one was broke. And they got, started playing good defense after that. And they, but we knew their defense wasn't going to hold up. That's what happened. They let, 30, they let them put that many points on them when they had them down, what was it, 27-7? So we knew that defense was suspect. So really, I'm not surprised. But I am surprised, even going back two weeks ago, what do you think happened, Chris, with that Philadelphia team? I mean, they just collapsed. You said the Philadelphia Eagles. I can barely hear you. Donna, can you yeah, he said, t- Tony was saying that with the Philadelphia Eagles, he said, what happened to them? You know, this was a team that everybody expected to be, you know, at top. But he said that something happened between Jalen Hurts, the quarterback, or the receivers. But what do you see, Tony said, uh, as far as what happened to the Eagle as far as their down spiral? It, it's crazy because I watched them most of the year. And, you know, early on they started out pretty good and they went on that spiral. I couldn't put my finger on it. Maybe it was something that happened in the locker room. Uh, somebody wasn't on the same page. Somebody frustrated they wouldn't get enough balls. And once people start complaining internally, things go downhill. And they just couldn't seem to, you know, pull it back together and, and, and put it in and rhythm, you know, Jalen Hurts, he was out of sync. As simple as that. The defense didn't play well, and it was just a tough season from then on out. Well, you know, if you take a look at it, so now we're down to two. We're looking at Kansas City. They have proven they deserve to be there, but they weren't the second-best team this year. At the same time, you, you say, well, what was happening with Kansas City? They, they came out of Hollywood, and they went back to Kansas City. And that's what they need to do. You don't need to show somebody girlfriend more than you show the quarterback. You don't need to show somebody girlfriend more than you show a, a, a guy that just made a sack. And that was getting too much of that. But at the same time, she's bought them a lot of fan success. Or the NFL. So, yeah, but if you look at this, they've had a little struggle. And you hate to say it, but losing the wide receiver to Miami, that was a big play, whether they want to think it was or not. The running game haven't been as staple as it, it was in the past, even though they got a couple of offensive linemen that are all pros, but at the same time, that running game. So really, you got to go down to that bottom, which we never want to say, but it may be because the enemy is not there any longer. Hey, Tony, all I want to ask you and t- say about that is the uh, Tariq Hill, basically the, the guys that they let that, that decided to go to other teams and so forth, and we know that he had their struggles throughout – the year, but when it's all said and done, Tony, it's what you do at the end that counts because they done got right back in the Super Bowl at Buffalo. They basically said, Buffalo said, hey, we played at home. Kansas City got to be on the road. First time in a long time that they haven't played at home. They went and took care of business because no matter how much they struggle during the course of the season without Eric B. Enemy, they pulled it together at the end because Andy Reeves is the one who calls the plays anyway. So Kansas City, no matter what you said, Tony, they are right back in the Super Bowl, no matter what kind of hiccups they had during the course of the season. And they, to me, right now, are the, is the team that's playing better. With a Patch McCombs, he's playing better right now. And finally, those fumble hand receivers finally learn how to catch the ball again. Well, you know, just go ahead, Chris. Hey, Chris, come on, Kobe. I know you're taking my Don't side. let that get away with that statement. I, they they better because their offensive line has grown. 
and they got some all pros on there. Talk to her, Chris. Tell them how I agree with Donna. Kansas City figured it out in the most important time of the year. Early on, people were talking about the receivers fumbling the ball around. Um, they just wasn't in sync. They didn't look like their normal selves. But when the game got on the line in the crucial moment in the AFC Championship, those guys got hot, and even the game before. So um, I, I will say this. I'm a 49ers fan. I don't know who's going to win this game. I think if it's a team that can beat Kansas City, it's the 49ers because of their style of play. They want to control the ball and win the time of possession game. you got to keep my homes off the field. you got to limit his opportunities and offensive drives because he can pick you apart. He's a guy that can sit back there and throw a 50, 55 times a game. And he can win. But a lot of quarterbacks can't do that. They have to lean on other components as far as special teams, defense, or the run game. So if the 49ers can get out there and establish the run, play solid defense, I think they got a good chance to do it. Well, I do give it to Tony. Tony said at the beginning of the year that the 49ers was the team, even beyond uh, Philadelphia, who everybody was putting a crown on. Tony, I did, must say that he did say the 49ers. So I'm giving you your props, Tony, only once. But but uh, one thing about uh, the 49ers. Let me clutch my pearls. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you better pat yourself on the back. Let, let, let me say this with the 49ers. You know, the Shanahan's all the way back to his dad. They've always been really, really smart about offensive football. And yes. down the way down to its son, if you look around the NFL now, most people want to spread the ball out, four wide outs, five wide outs. They want to throw the ball most of the game. The 49 and then so defense is adjusted. They got these 260-pound pass rushers coming off the edge, running a 4 4 40. The 49 said, well, wait a minute. Football is built on toughness, being physical, you know, imposing your will. So they went out and got some big tight ends. And they lined up with their hand in the dirt. And those little bit of defensive ends that are running a four four off the edge, can you take on this 280-pound tight end putting this right in right in your, in your grill? And that's what <laughs> they did. They established the run. They brought see, that that, 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 that's football talk. See, that's so, see, I used to fold up my helmet and put him in my back pocket. So that's football talk to me. That's that's right. Right. That's right. Hey, 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 Tony, hey, Tony when, when you look at uh, Baltimore, well, like we said, got away from the running game. That is not going to be the 49ers with Chris McCaffrey. The way that he ran that ball in the second half against the Detroit Lions, who's got a pretty good defense also. So when you look at Debo, Debo uh, Samuel should be back to 100% by the Super Bowl. And then they've got Kettle. I mean, you look at across that board as far as what they have on offense, and they're not bad on defense. Although I, I saw that the, the running at – uh, uh, Chase Young, nothing against Chase Young, and remember on the other side, you know, you got did he play the other running. day? Huh? Did Chase Young play the other day? He did, Tony, but they ran right at him again. Oh, I did hear his name in warm up. You were oh, okay, I'm they're sorry. Running at him. <laughs> and, you know what, though? The, 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 he's being criticized for the way he played, and he should, but I can guarantee you, his teammates watching that stuff on film hurt him more than anything. Are you the right? Yeah, the coaches, all that's one thing. But your guy, the guys that's on your team that put in all of the work with you, once they watch that on tape, trust me, Chase is going to come out and he's going to play like a wild animal next game. I hope he does because that was embarrassing. I liked about the 49ers too. They were down in that game. Yeah. But they kept running the football and they stayed true to who they were. Baltimore never stayed true to who they were. That's why they lost. And could you talk a little bit about Trent Williams, a former Washington Redskins? Uh, uh, you know, he, he came in and took your position after you retired and everything. And, you know, when you look at Trent Williams and what he went through, you know, with the, the tumor, uh, you know, the brain surgery, what he went through in Washington. And finally, I talked to him this year when they played the 49ers. Just a great attitude. And, and for him to be able to be in a Super Bowl, Tony, I want you to elaborate on this, too. How do you just see Trent Williams and that offensive line of the 49ers so happy for him to be in the place where he's at right now and just playing at a high level still? Yeah, but unfortunately, he he's just like if they – they just like there's another team lose a quarterback. When they lost them for four or five games, they were just an average team. The other one on that team is McCaffrey. You may see him break off 50 yards, then he's off the next play. That's what's scary about the Super Bowl. 
And I told you, Donna, and that's the caveat I gave you. I told you that these teams would be in at the end. As a matter of fact, if you remember the beginning, I was taking Kansas City over the Ravens. But I always told you the only thing with the 49ers, they have one team that can't afford those two guys to get hurt. And that happened this year, and they turned into an average team. Please continue, Sam. Okay. Oh, don't be trying to give him a thumbs up, Chris. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I agree with him. And first, I want to apologize to Trent because uh, I remember I worked with the Red, Redskins at the time, and uh, it was between Russell O'Kong and Trent. And I was telling them, go with Russell O'Kong. And Coach Shanahan, he was like, no, I think I want to go with Trent. He's more athletic. And if you look, the longevity, the high level, Trent's the baddest thing in the NFL. He's really talented, and you can't lose that guy. I mean, he's the staple of the offensive line. He, uh, he's the leader of the group. Everybody respects him. He sets the tone. He's nasty. He's gritty. He can run block. He can pass protect. I mean, he's everything. If they lose him, they're going to be in trouble. But I think he'll be fine for this one game, and I'm rolling with the 49ers led by Trent. Okay. Hey, you so know what, Donald? I got I one don't care what Chris said. Got, yeah, don't be hating. Just let me I ask don't the, care what you said, Tony. Let me ask the professional question. Now, and this is part of our game plan, too. Here on the podcast, we're going to hit everything we can. Have you even been considered, have you thought about wanting to be considered as offensive line coach in Washington? Uh, could you repeat that? Hey, yeah, me? Tony just said that. Tony, I had to turn t down Tony's mic because I'm not trying to hear him. But but he's, <laughs> but he's basically saying that, have you ever been a, a considered being an offensive line coach? Because I know that Chris coached high school for a minute. Yes, I, I basically not in the NFL per se. I could have worked my way up. I learned under Chris Forrester. He's an excellent offensive line coach. I learned so many different things that I didn't even know when I played. And I learned from one of the greatest and Joe Bugle. So um, I could have continued to stick with it and put in the hours and the time and probably work my way up. But I chose to wind up going to high school. Then I wound up going to college. I could have stayed in college. I, I learned under Nick Saban, uh, Mario Cristobal. Uh, Joe Pendry, guys like that, really good. Uh, Jeff Fallon, that's with the Eagles now. And I learned a lot, and I know I could do it, but right now I'm just kind of more focused on my kids. I really don't have the time to kind of put in the work to become an office line coach on the collegiate level or the NFL. Speaking that's of uh, college, man. yeah, speaking of college, your old coach is going to be retired, Nick Saban from Alabama. I mean, who would have thought that? Is it because when you look at college now with the portal and everything that's happening with players getting paid and all that, is that one reason why? Because, you know, Alabama had all the players coming to them. Uh, even even Nick Saban was hiding players so nobody else could get them. So so how, wh why do you think that at this stage uh, you see him retiring? And what's your thoughts on him since you played under him? Well, see, I, I never played under him. I actually worked under him for two worked years. Worked under him, yeah. You're right, right. But, um, it's kind of bittersweet. I mean, he, he brought back our program, you know, for a while we were down. So just having him now was a blessing. He built everything back up, multiple championships. Uh, but it's about time. He's an older guy now. He probably wants to enjoy his family, probably get on TV and do some commentating stuff. Um, I do think that it's much more difficult now for him to dominate in the recruiting with um, the NIL. Uh, the transfer portal. So he probably realized it was about that time to get away from it. But he's a legendary guy. He's going to be Hall of Fame. He's the greatest to ever do it in college at this point. So why not go ahead and hang it up and enjoy the rest of your life? And he was getting paid good, Tony. He, they was I know, but you know what, but Are we sure he's not considering NFL? No, I think he's done. You think he's done? I think, I think he's done for good. Okay. Okay, well, we got to get to it. Before we get out of here, Donna, you know, we, we're only supposed to be a minute, and we have 40 minutes now. Okay, who wins the Super Bowl and why, Big Chris? You say who's going to win the Super Bowl and why? Yes. First off, the 49ers going to make me happy and win it because I'm a 49ers fan. Now, <laughs> who paid the bills with the commanders? It is what it is. I'm always rooting for them. But I think the 49ers are going to control the clock. I think they're going to stay true to who they are. They're going to be physical. They're going to run the ball well. And if they can just figure out a way to stop Mahomes or at least slow him down, because you're not, you're not going to completely stop him. I think that you can win the game from that aspect. But it's going to come down to the wire. I think it's going to be a pretty tight game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. 
But uh, hopefully um, the running game and the play action by the 49ers, Kyle, the way he designs plays, is going to come through. Okay, Donna, I know you're going to tell me about how your team No, is. no, no, no. I think Chris said it, you know, as far as he gave the analysis of what I think the 49ers are going to do. But then again, on the other side of the, the field, you got the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reeves, who knows how to dissect, take a team apart, and knows the weakness of, of teams. And then you've got the Kansas City Chiefs. He talked about controlling the game. Kansas City finally has a running game. Who would have thought that? Because they normally don't, they, they're pass happy. But this year, even though Air the enemy isn't there, I think that they're more balanced in running the ball a lot more. And then uh, they've got the, the wide receiver, Kelsey, and all of those guys. You could you see where Baltimore's top defense couldn't t stop Travis Kelsey. He had he was perfect on the day. So I just think that defensively they've got uh, tools on that side of the ball too, uh, where nobody is talking about the Kansas City Chiefs defense. And I think experience them being there before, knowing what it takes to win Super Bowl, knowing how to make adjustments. Both coaches know how to make great adjustments, and you you never see Kansas City sweat about nothing. So. I'm picking uh, the, the experienced team because I think they balance each other out. And, you know, uh, it doesn't matter who had each other's number before because Kansas City had the San Francisco number before. And I think, once again, they'll have it. And, Tony, you got the last word. Um, what do you think? Well, I look at it, and both of you have very valid points right there, but I look at it one thing that – I feel like this is going to be the year that Frisco finally get across the line. Not that they're the real, the best team, but they are the best unit. And got both of them are very good team. Both of them have a lot of talent. I feel like Kansas City is going to be right there as they always are. But I, that one little thing, and you fans watch too, Eric Bieniemy. Yeah, with him not being there, it is a difference. But at the same time, you look at us arguing on this show and stuff. We just having fun because we're gonna be here a lot. Now, we may not be the best in the world, but we want to be the best you've ever seen. So hey, Chris, will you come back? Would you come back after the Super Bowl and we, we dissect it again to see who's right? Definitely. Because it is like Big Chris coming back, and we'll be back too. So no sense of saying goodbye. We say in the minute. In the minute. In a minute. <laughs>